Okay, welcome all um, to this session uh, around humanitarian watch coordination from Global Support to National Platform Partnership. Thank you very much for being with us today. Um, we're still expecting a couple of uh, uh, speakers and participants to come online, but we'll start the session. Um, so we're hoping to have those technical glitches fixed, uh, fixed as soon as possible. Um, basically, welcome to all. Um, this is a session uh, hosted by the Global Wash Cluster alongside key partners to look at humanitarian wash coordination. Uh, basically, what we will take you through is a one hour session uh, around uh, introductory remarks. We'll have a panel discussion uh, with local actors, and then we'll tell you a bit more about uh, surge mechanisms and the Global Wash Cluster field support team. So without further ado, uh, what I will basically uh, try to do is um, uh, forward you to the introductory remarks and introduce you to uh, our distinguished guest, Wafa Saeed, who is the Acting Director, Coordination Division with OCHA. Wafa, over to you. Okay, thank you so much. I am actually very much delighted to welcome the participant to this special event on humanitarian coordination as part of the World Water Week for 2021, together also with my colleague from UNICEF, Merichel Rilano, who's a deputy director for EMOPS. And my role, I am the acting director for OCHA coordination division here in Geneva. And as part of our support, we also support humanitarian coordination structures, both at global and country level. And I want to start first by just putting things into context, because as many of you are aware, we have a global humanitarian response plan that we have asked for around 35, 36 billion US dollars to support people in need in 2021. And the plan is currently around 30, 31 funded. But within that plan, we also have a cluster or a sector that is also focusing on providing support to people affected by crisis to safe um, uh, drinking water, hygiene, and sanitation. And compared to this 30% level of funding for the water, hygiene, and sanitation cluster or sector, it is only around nine or 10% funded. And also we are talking about 120 million people who are in need of assistance when it comes to water, hygiene, and sanitation. So you see this also large number of people who are in need. And also you see that we are also uh, have a challenge of not having adequate resources to address these needs, which makes coordination very, very important, both to make sure that we do the best with the coordination, uh, with the available resources, but also to uh, be able to mobilize additional support and, do, and uh, support the people. And also, as we know, water hygiene and sanitation by themselves are very critical needs, but they're also very critical to the health of people, to the nutrition of children. And having that said, I would like just to uh, flag three points with regard to humanitarian coordination and uh, water hygiene and sanitation sector. And I'll talk very briefly about localization. I will talk about the role of the cluster itself. And I will talk briefly about intercluster coordination. So starting from um, localization, I think it's very important, especially if we're in an environment where we have limited resources, that we make sure that all the actors coming together, whether starting by national actors, whether they're government or non-governmental actors, and the international actors from the United Nations or the non international non-governmental NGOs, that we really have effective coordination. And the local actors are at the center of this. And I would say almost at all times, the first responders in crisis are the local actors, are the people themselves. And I think that's why very, very important, they have to be at the center and at the heart, both in terms of the coordination, both in terms of also having more access to resources to support the response. And many of the colleagues here in this forum might be following the Grand Bargain, which is the framework by a number of signatories across member states, UN, and non-governmental organizations, including local actors, to improve the effectiveness and the efficiency of our humanitarian response. And localization is part and parcel of that uh, Grand Bargain too. And as we say, we need to make the humanitarian action as local as possible and as international as necessary. And I know we still have a lot of work to do with regard to improving our work on localization. 
And I want to thank our colleagues from UNICEF because they have also supported the Interagency Standing Committee um, where we have guidance to improve and strengthen participation, representation, and leadership of local and national actors. So it was produced in English, but with the support of UNICEF, it was translated to Arabic, uh, Spanish, and French. And I think this was also help us to engage with a large number of actors about the guidance and how do you roll it out and how it can work effectively. The second point that I want to talk about is about the role of the clusters. And also I would like to um, flag that the WASH cluster, when they are doing the roadmap for their vision, what to do and how to support the coordination and the response, they have actually expanded their engagement with actors beyond the WASH cluster. And they had an inclusive roadmap because you know, while they were coordinating with WASH actors, they work with quite a large number of actors that can also support the work in terms of advocacy and response. So I think that was an excellent example. And also uh, we know that UNICEF is the leading the water hygiene and sanitation, but also education, nutrition, and also what we call an area of responsibility, child protection under the protection cluster. And I think also one important role for the clusters have been to support the coordination structures by giving them policy guidance, normative, helping the different clusters to exchange good practices. And I think so that whole role in terms of supporting the response, I think is very important. I think um, my colleague in the introduction spoke about search. Also the clusters, I think one of key role is that to provide also the human resources required. And um, I spent three months in, in the beginning of this year supporting the response in Ethiopia. And I think the WASH cluster has been one of the first to deploy a dedicated cluster. And that has made a big difference in the response. I would also like to flag that we have done this interagency standing committee coordination mapping to look at the gaps and the water hygiene and sanitation cluster has really also had a higher um, average in terms of having capacity of coordination on the ground. So uh, for WASH, it is 64% in terms of the presence of uh, dedicated wash capacity compared to the 60 uh, average and also it had a higher uh, capacity in terms of information management um, uh, capacities and analysis and I think these are areas that we have was to improve overall and particularly the issue of, um, of analysis and also I would like to acknowledge that also the cluster uh, now they have um, UNICEF they announced this uh, CLAIR 2, which is an evaluation to the work of UNICEF as a cluster lead agency. And I think it's very important that uh, this initiative is there to look at what's working well, what needs to improve. And I think this would benefit all the clusters, not only the clusters uh, led by UNICEF. I'll just conclude by talking also about, it's very important that in coordination that we are now looking at inter-cluster coordination. This is Jack by OCHA, facilitated by OCHA, but it is in collaboration, working with all the different clusters. And at the heart of this is that we are also shifting uh, together to put people at the center of the response, including from how we analyze need. And I think many of you would be aware about this framework that is joint intersectoral or um, analysis framework that we look at the needs, how the different factors are impacting on the needs of the people at different levels. So there is an excellent also collaboration on, on, on that regard and also having an integrated response to address the needs of the people. Maybe I'll stop here, but before I would just conclude, I, it's really been a pleasure for me to invite it for this very important discussions and very important events. I would also like to warmly thank the conveners of the event, the Global Wash Cluster, ACF, Solidarities International and the French Water Partnership for really uh, organizing this event and for giving me the opportunity to talk to you. And I really look for uh, constructive discussion so that we can continue our um, efforts together. And um, thank you so much. Thank you. Back to you, please. Thank you very much, uh, Wafa Said, for those uh, in inspiring words. Um, thank you so much as also for, for Ocha for being uh, such a longtime contributor also to those uh, events and also uh, for, for, for making this happen. I will uh, now pass the floor to a, a video, hopefully, that uh, our hosts will be able to play from our Deputy Director in UNICEF of Emergency Operations, Merichel Relano. Welcome to all. 
Good morning. It's very nice to be here with you, and I'm very pleased to join all of you to open this special event on humanitarian coordination at the 2021 World Water Week. It's an honor to be doing so alongside Wafa Said, the acting director from the Coordination Division of OCHA, who I recently met in, in Geneva. My name is Meritzel Delaño. I'm the Deputy Director of the Office of Emergency Programs uh, in UNICEF. UNICEF is the cluster lead agency for education, nutrition, wash, and also leads the area of responsibility for child protection. And we are a strong believer and supporter in the IASC and the cluster approach led by OCHA. Let me start a little bit about the humanitarian response in 2021. Uh, crises this year have reached a global peak across disease outbreaks, famine, extreme violence, conflict, natural disasters, and climate change. So let me start a little bit with humanitarian response in 2021. Uh, crises have reached a global peak across disease outbreaks, famine, extreme violence, conflict, natural disasters, and climate change. As humanitarian crises become more protracted, humanitarian organizations have quickly adapted to address the increasing needs. Yet, we still struggle to keep up with the frequency of prolonged and complex emergencies, with water, sanitation and hygiene as one of the key areas of assistance provided. The emergence of COVID-19 pandemic further shined the global spotlight on the critical need for quality water and sanitation and hygiene responses as a key preventative measure in public health emergencies, increasing the number of people in need of wash assistance from 83 million in 2019 to 122.4 million in 2020. The entire WASH sector was mobilized to respond to the unprecedented emergency posed by the COVID-19 pandemic. In total, UNICEF and its partners reached 106 million people in 120 countries, including in richer countries where COVID-19 exposed critical gaps in war services for children. So let me talk a little bit now about the UNICEF as a cluster lead agency. This event is a great opportunity for how UNICEF as a cluster lead agency supports and believes in the importance of cluster coordination as we are also rolling out our core commitment for children where coordination plays a central role. In order to achieve this, UNICEF remains committed to ensuring that coordination is properly staffed and dedicated resources for coordination, information management and assessments are there, ensuring the right people at the right time in the right place. UNICEF will continue to demonstrate leadership in our role as the cluster lead agency by spearheading innovative approaches to achieve effective and accountable cluster and sectoral coordination, which supports delivering people-centered humanitarian services at the scale and at the core of the humanitarian program cycle. This includes integration of gender, age, disability, and accountability to affect the population throughout the process. We emphasize the criticality of engagement and participation of national governments and local actors in needs assessment, analysis, planning, and response. This is aligned with the recently released IAS guidance on strengthening the participation, representation, and leadership of local and national actors. We also continue to advocate and push for efforts to curb the practice of capping the people in need, targets, and or exclusions of specific populations from the HPC. This practice severely impinges on the transparency of an evidence-based need in the identification and analysis process. And finally, let me talk a little bit about the WASH cluster. Um, the pandemic has solidified that operating under a business as usual framework is not it's no longer viable for the WASH sector and has resulted in the global WASH cluster broadening the scope of cluster coordination to sectoral coordination and shifting towards innovative approaches that more effectively and accountably address the needs of affected population. This has brought an opportunity to strengthen humanitarian coordination aimed at accelerated actions towards localization, preparedness and resilience across more countries. This has been achieved through critical search support through the field support team and standby partners in 17 places like Mozambique, Sudan, Guinea, Central African Republic, Chad, Ethiopia, Syria, Fiji, St. Vincent, and Honduras. These deployments have provided critical support to the core functions of coordination, information management, and assessment. Finally, we're, we're very grateful to the engagement of OCHA in today's important session on humanitarian coordination. It's always a pleasure for UNICEF to collaborate with OCHA and with my colleague Wafa. 
We will also like to thank uh, ACF, Solidarité Internationale, the French Water Partnership for your support uh, to this event, along with the partners and donors that have supported the FST, including ACF, Impact Reach, IMAP, NCA and Oxfam, BHA USAID, Minister of Foreign Affairs of Norway and the French NATO. Thank you very much. Thank you so much uh, for that. I will pass the floor over to Monica Ramos. Thank you, Aliocha. Thank you, everyone. So I had some technical difficulties this morning with the UNICEF laptop blocking my Zoom. So, so happy to be here. Um, thank you. I just want to express our, our real sincere uh, gratitude to Wafa and to Mary Chow for their support in this wonderful event. It's so great to see Ocha and UNICEF coming together around the importance of effective coordination. And now we look forward to the panel discussion, which will be moderated by Martina Rama, our WASH cluster coordinator in Burkina Faso. Over to you, Martina. Thank you and greetings to all. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure for me to be here with you and to... Um, my name is Martina Rama. I am WASH Cluster Coordinator in Burkina Faso, and I'm here to facilitate the moderation of our panel discussion. So it's really a pleasure for me to welcome here our, our panelists. Uh, which I will present to you. Uh, first of all, we have uh, the pleasure to have engineer Monfer Shoblak, representative of the Coastal Municipalities Water Utility in Gaza. Uh, we also have the pleasure to have with us Mr. Aminu Muhammad, representative of the Ministry of Water Resources of Borno State in Nigeria. We have also with us Mr. Utpol Das, who is a coordination specialist for the local NGO BRAC in Kots Bazar, Bangladesh. We have uh, also uh, Mr. Pierre-Georges Akilimali with us. He is from the NGO uh, Solidarité Internationale and he is co-lead of the WASH cluster in Burkina Faso. And finally, we have the great honor to have with us Mr. Grant Leiti, Deputy Humanitarian Coordinator, uh, Coordinator in Ethiopia. So really welcome to all of you, dear panelists. And uh, I will start by addressing a, a question to each one of you. And please bear in mind that you have four minutes to answer the question. So the first question is addressed uh, to engineer Monfer Shoblak. Um, dear dear Mr. Uh, yeah. what is the role of a service provider in the whole humanitarian response? And at which level it coordinates with other actors. Minter Monfer, Thank, you. Thank you. you, Martina. Thank you. Uh, in fact, it's a, a big question that is addressed to, uh, <clears throat> to a person who's working in, in Gaza Strip, which is famous by its uh, highly uh, uh, political instability. And uh, as service provider, uh, uh, where you are working since more than two decades under a place where it's a subject of frequent uh, incursions and wars in Gaza. Uh, and you need to keep uh, uh, providing services where most of your facilities are where, and still a subject of targeting, destruction, interruption of services. However, this is uh, uh, a reason uh, where we need to coordinate and intercept with uh, uh, partners, especially in the UN agencies, in the uh, 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 emergency uh, and humanitarian uh, uh, institution, in, in the various uh, um, aspects in, in water and this, uh, with services, and top of that, course, our colleagues in the WASH cluster. Uh, uh, that's why uh, our uh, active role uh, in the WASH cluster as a beneficiary and service provider was like a destiny, if you can say that, because without their uh, uh, support, uh, uh, we could not keep providing services uh, even, and especially under emergency response. And in fact, our relation with uh, uh, our uh, colleagues in the WASH cluster started by helping us in providing uh, emergency uh, uh, things, intervention like spare parts, uh, uh, chlorination materials, uh, generators, and uh, and this uh, started to be developed uh, uh, with the time. And, and here I'm, 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 I'm uh, specifying uh, specific partners in the WASH cluster, like and there are a lot like UNICEF, uh, ICRC, uh, OCHA, Oxfam, uh, and and there are a lot of partners in this WASH cluster, but. 
with the time it started to to move from uh, emergency intervention and just survive in more uh, developmental and i would say uh, more uh, towards uh, uh, helping the service provider in not only uh, be able to, to intervene in, under emergency uh, situation uh, into more sustainable in order to enhance the resilience of the people in the Gaza Strip. And this, uh, in fact, uh, started since uh, 2010. And uh, today we are talking about uh, an, an intervention which is transformed from emergency response towards uh, more sustainable. And, and I can give more than example, talking about uh, uh, the construction of uh, SPLDs, uh, small uh, low volume dissertation plants, which is helping us to, to reach people with adequate services uh, uh, and also the emergency preparedness program, which is uh, 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 led by ICRC in order to help us how we can intervene during war situation without uh, 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 being uh, touched or harmed by uh, the two parties while they are hitting each other. And, and we started in 2008 when we lost seven of our team during their work. Today, it's a zero uh, 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 targeting where we have a system of uh, uh, visibility when uh, nobody will uh, uh, deny that this uh, operator and this engineer is working in the water uh, sector. Uh, in a more uh, developmental uh, way today, we are not talking all, only about emergency uh, uh, response and uh, more uh, service today. We are talking about how the WASH helps the service provider in developing its institution uh, in order to be able to work uh, uh, not only under emergency, but trying to uh, reach uh, a sustainable water and wastewater uh, 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 services and, and provision. And I, I think uh, today transforming the humanitarian intervention in Gaza Strip under still and unstable political situation from humanitarian intervention towards a more sustainable and more resilient intervention, I think it's something that I, I would be to be proud of and, and a lesson learned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Engineer Montero Schoblak, for this very inspiring words around uh, resilience and the, the link between uh, emergency and development in a very critical uh, context of uh, Palestine. Thank you very much. We'll move forward to our next panelist. So the question for Mr. Aminu uh, Mohamed. Please, could you clarify how the role of a co-lead for the government side reflects its global role as duty bearer towards its own population. OK, th okay thank you very much. Uh, in, in fact, I am very glad to, to be opportune to be selected as one of the speakers in this wonderful event. Uh, we in the Northeast, particularly Boro State, um, we have been undergoing so many challenges so at, uh, on the side of the government, the government chairs the cluster meetings alongside UNICEF coordinator and uh, co-coordinator from NRC representing the NGO perspective to the uh, general operation. Then government is a member of the strategic as, uh, advisory group and, uh, and sits in all technical working groups uh, during meetings. Then designs and technical guides are supported and endorsed by the government. In the in the northeast, especially uh, in Borno State, then well, we have the water policy and other guiding documents from the government to uh, to use to develop the cluster strategy and technical uh, uh, guidance. Then on the part of the government, we have uh, the Ministry of Water Resources um, uh, conduct water operation in urban uh, in in the urban wash. Then Ruasa for rural uh, rural wash. So. Uh, we, uh, we have some challenges uh, in the in, in the wash cluster, particularly in Bono, uh, in the northeast. Funding for major infrastructure like solid waste landfill, fecal sludge management systems, municipal type water network (ETC) remains low. Uh, displacement has caused a burden on the uh, on, on the side of the government uh, on the limited res uh, government resource. Uh, planning for the different scenario, displacement, protracted crisis, early recovery, and uh, development require different strategy and uh, process. 
Then, Water under Ministry of Water Resources, while Environmental Sanitation under Ministry of Environment makes additional layers of coordination and uh, planning. Uh, starting at government level and political uh, priority, for, for instance, local level village wash structure is not yet fully functional. Um, we have some gaps apart from the challenges. Then uh, uh, on the side of the government, limited funding for the 25-year 25, 25 development uh, plan and major infrastructural projects. The, the state government is able to, uh, to come up with a 25-year development plan which the wash closers or the partners in the northeast should key in through the, uh, this developmental plan. So this is the role of the government on this aspect. Then we have meeting emergency and national uh, standards for water and sanitation coverage um, is hampered by insecurity, uh, congestion in camps, and uh, or lack of land. So these are the few uh, activities which the government is able to, to engage in. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Yeah. Aminu Mohamed, for this yeah. uh, very interesting um, uh, words from the government side on on the importance of, of the government endorsement of all the technical norms and aspects and importance of coordination with government institution at various uh, administrative levels from national yeah. to regional to local yeah thank you very much we'll now well, move forward yeah welcome thank you very much <laughs> to the following speaker uh, so mr uh, utpo das from the local ngo brass uh, what are the challenges and opportunities for a local partner to join humanitarian wash coordination platforms and to be a member of the strategic advisory group? Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Martina Roma. And uh, good afternoon from Cox's Bayer. Uh, this is Utpal Dash, coordinator, uh, coordination specialist from BRAC. And thank you for giving us the opportunity to represent BRAC's experience after joining the humanitarian wash coordination platform and becoming the member of uh, SAG. Uh, for BRAG, being the world's largest non-government development organization uh, was a great opportunity to join the humanitarian wash coordination platform and uh, strategic advisory group. Uh, you might know about the influx of about 1 million Rohingya people from Myanmar to Bangladesh back at the end of 2017, uh, which was a testament for BRAG to support in this one of the largest refugee crises. Uh, since the first day of the influx, uh, BRAC started it, its operations for the displaced people and uh, supported in almost all areas uh, with its long standing uh, experience. Uh, you name it like shelter, wash, health, nutrition, uh, protection, flood, site management, food, education in all sectors. But working in the humanitarian context was a different experience for BRAC and uh, other local development organizations in Bangladesh as well. So it was kind of a new phenomena in Bangladesh. So in the initial days, it was not oil plant coordinated and effective enough. Uh, however, uh, immediately humanitarian coordination group was formed and different things came under a systematic approach and Bragg being one of the main stakeholders became member of almost all the platforms like sp 2 e um, Uki and TECNAF coordination group, um, etc. Uh, since then, the coordination group is maintaining coordination uh, within the government agencies uh, among the UN bodies and also with the local and international NGOs by providing support in developing different SOPs, um, capacity building. Uh, the WASH coordination group is in particular helped us uh, a lot as BRAG didn't have much experience in managing large water networks fecal sludge network constructions and maintenance, uh, especially uh, in an emergency context. Uh, we have received support for developing uh, drawings and design of different infrastructures like latrines, omen wash blocks, bathing cubicles, solid waste management plant, developing guidelines and providing uh, technical support in uh, different um, emergency, uh, emergency situations like diarrheal disease outbreaks, supporting in uh, natural calamities as well. Moreover, uh, learning and good experiences of any interventions in other parts of the world was brought in Cox's Bazar within short time after localizing it. So which was possible uh, due to the um, humanitarian coordination group. For example, introduction of mobile latrine 
uh, innovative and uh, uh, hand washing uh, hand washing device was intro introduced uh, which was, which is also a good experience for brag uh, also wash coordination group lobbied with the local NGOs and also with the government and provided quick and necessary supported uh, whenever it was required at the same time brac is benefiting by developing the capacity of its staffs and also with the support of the wash coordination group uh, for example in back in 2019 uh, brac arranged training for the local um, engineers uh, by uh, with the support of humanitarian coordination group from uh, netherlands so like global knowledge and making it a local um, uh, resource so uh, this, this was uh, this was only possible due to this uh, wash coordination group also we got support in different um, fire incidents uh, that happened and also during the covid in uh, situations and in the last pandemic situation covid pandemic situations so as uh, the global experiences was brought in cox's bazar that helped break and also uh, other uh, local ngos immensely uh, to uh, coordinate the uh, situations in a nice way. And if you look at some of the data, uh, say for AWD cases, which is one of the lowest, uh, lowest um, in emergency context. Uh, okay, thank however, you. Uh, okay. Thank, <laughs> thank you. you so much, Mr. Das, for this uh, interesting uh, words. Uh, about all the support that the WASH cluster has been providing to you. Very interesting, this concept of the global knowledge that has been brought as a local resource and all the support that you received. And I'm sure all the also interesting support and uh, insights that you have been given to the WASH cluster, thanks to your uh, experience as a, as a very important local NGO uh, with very good knowledge of, of the country and of the field. So I think that this interaction between the local and the global is, is very enriching for, for both sides. So thank you very much, thank you. Mr. Das. I will move forward to the next uh, panel speaker, uh, Mr. Pierre-Georges Akilimali. So the question for you, can you describe the role of national cluster co-lead and what specific responsibilities and accountability level it brings to your agency? Thank you. Pierre-Georges, are you with us? I think you are on mute. Thank you very much, Martina. Uh, I'm sorry, I was mute. Okay. Uh, so, uh, um, as a national colleague for uh, Worst Cluster, the main role is to support the Worst Cluster coordinator in all the coordination tasks. Uh, and for that, there are many tasks for the coordination which are uh, mainly uh, uh, to refine the analysis of, uh, and monitoring of need. And on the basis of led by some classes. In Burkina Faso, we have uh, six regions which are affected by security and metal prices. And the main role uh, for, uh, for the college is to support uh, the subclasses in the six regions which are in crisis. Uh, and um, uh, 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 among the perspectives, I think we need to stabilize the position of of, of, of the colleague, uh, and he must be uh, he must be dedicated to the, to the other because if we need to if we need to to stabilize the, the position of the worst colleague colleague for classes. 
I think it is better if we can stabilize that position and allocate a budget for the position. Uh, among the main difficulties, we have uh, the gap for, for that position. And the short duration of a project that contribute to the quality position. For, for, for instance, uh, uh, for now, we don't have budget for that position, and it has been uh, for such just six months. And six months is not really, really good for the, the position. And I think we need to allocate uh, more budget for the position and especially uh, to stabilize the, the position. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Piaja Jacquelimali for your words about this uh, position of the co-lead in Burkina Faso. It's very important to have a co-lead, uh, to have a, a coordination team, not only one person in, all, in order to share the responsibility and uh, have a more democratic leadership of the, of the cluster. So um, our last uh, panel speaker, I'm not sure if he's joined us yet, uh, Mr. Uh, Grant Leti, are you with us today? Okay, it seems he was not able to join us. So um, we will then uh, just uh, wrap up uh, shortly the panel discussion, which has been very interesting. The main points that has have come up are uh, the importance of, of this really coordination with all the different stakeholders, especially the local stakeholders, the very uh, important role played by the water utilities in coordination with the different NGOs, uh, the local government and uh, the different levels of the government for the technical norms uh, adoption and for the um, adaptation of uh, development um, strategies to this new emergency that has occurred. The, the interesting uh, knowledge uh, share between the global level, the global level and the local level, and the importance of also having a coordination team that not only one person concentrating all the tasks, but there is a share between different people. So all this is very important uh, to have more uh, resilience uh, in of local stakeholders and uh, also for the link between the uh, development, uh, the, the emergency and the development nexus, which is very important, and also for the accountability towards the affected populations, of course. So, um, but as, as we have also seen, it's uh, sometimes also quite challenging to ensure this coordination because there is a need of uh, resources, which sometimes are lacking, there is a need of technical skills. And so for these reasons, it's very important also to have this support, which is provided by the global WASH cluster to the different um, coordination teams in the different countries. And there is a very interesting mechanism, which is uh, the field support team of the global WASH cluster that provides the support in case uh, there is a need uh, which has been identified at country level. So we'll now uh, pass to the video, which explains the importance of this, uh, this mechanism. The field support team FST mechanism is the principal means for the Global WASH cluster to provide operational support to national humanitarian WASH coordination platforms. The current FST consortium is led by ACF and includes members from Oxfam, NCA, IMPACT, and IMAP. The FST helps us to achieve our work with the Interagency Standing Committee and the seven core functions of cluster coordination. The current FST includes four cluster coordinators, three information managers, and one assessment specialist.
So I was uh, physically deployed in St. Vincent and the Grenadines from 6th of May until the 9th of June. My deployment followed uh, the volcanic eruption of uh, April 2021. And during my deployment, uh, we ran a was rapid needs assessment in 85 uh, public shelters where the displaced people were hosted. Uh, we developed a weekly sea trip, uh, different info products such as the website and visibility templates. We launched the WASP capacity mapping exercise among the WASP partners. So during my fiscal deployment, we identified the Ministry of Health and more specifically the Public Health Department. And I trained two information managers from the department. And at the end, we hand over the coordination mechanism to the public health. So recently was deployed to Chad two months deployment and what he achieved was mainly ensuring the operation routine of the cluster uh, platforms but also uh, build up partners understanding of uh, coordination mechanism and mobilize them to uh, participate more effectively to the coordination function. And uh, also, I focus on uh, re reinforcing the coordination structures by providing tools and developing strategies uh, to, um, to build the capacity of uh, our stakeholders. We were called for a deployment to go to uh, the Northwest Syrian hub, which is based in Gaziantep, Turkey. And with COVID, because I was a global wash cluster, I was connection with all the uh, guidelines coming through at the time. So our main achievement was fronting the wash cluster coordination, representing a fairly high profile emergency task force for advocacy to get funds. And then obviously once we had those funds to channel them into the right direction in order for us to have an efficient operation. best surge you can have is is surge that is standing capacity and they're there working for you in downtime and then when the when the emergency happens and they can go off and deploy because then you've got them working in preparedness and they know the context they know what they need to do and so they're more predictable a sudden emergency happens and usually most of the country offices and lack capacities so the deploying and experienced high caliber expertise on the ground really improves and the coordination, information, immediate response implementation. That's why the search mechanism is very critical for any humanitarian context for me. The team and the support has been crucial. I mean, we really have been relying quite uh, a lot on the support. There's been seven countries where in our region only through uh, 16 rapid uh, deployments where we really felt the support to coordinate the WASH uh, efforts uh, between government, UNICEF, NGOs, other UN and to really make a difference. The International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies was the FST consortium uh, lead and grant manager for a few years. We feel that it's it's the most effective, uh, most meaningful, most concrete thing that the Global WASH cluster has ever done. It means capacity building for staff and it means to make sure that we have the tools that we could help with our WASH intervention. First of all, at, at ACF, uh, we, do, we do know how important is the WASH issue. We know it, this issue is at the crossroad of so many vulnerabilities throughout the world and we do know it is linked to hunger, it is linked to health issues and it is linked also to environmental change. It is the reason why ACF decided to, I hope, to show the example in uh, contributing to the development of uh, this field support team and taking the lead because also we believe that we have an expertise in this field and we do believe that coordination and to be honest, we call it mutualization. So we try to take this lead, we try to act humbly, but we try to uh, bring also our leadership and our expertise. And I hope that all together, we will have three to five very successful years in bringing appropriate support on the field for people facing uh, WASH issues. Professional. Reliable. Meeting the needs. Dedication. Efficient. Support to people in need. It's predictable. FST, it's for sure the solution.
So I hope you enjoyed this uh, very uh, in interesting uh, video on the field support team. Um, now, it has also uh, interesting uh, to, to see how everyone sees the capacity building really component as very important and also the, the component of bringing uh, international expertise to the service of the local level and to the service of the people in order also to make everyone work together to have all the different stakeholders involved. So now we'll leave uh, the word to, to the next presentation, which is a presentation by Jeanne Lapeg, which is a field support team manager at the Global Wash Cluster. Yes, thanks a lot, uh, Martina. Good morning to everyone. So um, I'm going to present very briefly because I understand that we are late, uh, the project structure, the main outcomes, and also, uh, and also the project challenges. Can you go back to the first slide, please? Thank you very much. So uh, first, uh, the field support team is a team of uh, dedicated professionals. And uh, this team is there to support the national humanitarian uh, wash coordination platforms. There are around 30 platforms today which are in, uh, in acute humanitarian needs. And this team is deployable on demand. So it's the countries who are asking for a support. And the support is about the three main functions of coordination, information management, you cannot coordinate if you don't have information, and coordinated assessments in areas where assessments are needed and in areas where we have gap. It's all run by a consortium of partners. You can see the logos on the, on the bottom of the slide, which are including humanitarian agencies and also humanitarian donors. Next. So about the project structure, next. First thing, the, the project is embedded in the uh, humanitarian global roadmap for the wash sector. Uh, it's a, it has a, a legitimacy because it's one of the 17 initiatives of this roadmap. It's also coherent with other initiatives and it's also accountability. Next, please. Thank you. So here you see the six uh, humanitarian agencies which are involved. Why uh, do we have six agencies in this project? First, because it's the principle of partnership. We want to have as many partners as possible involved in humanitarian response. It gives us uh, flexibility. It's also a matter of technical specificity. For example, IMPACT is a specialist of uh, humanitarian assessments. And of course, having UNICEF on board is super useful because it's a connection with the global and the national clusters. Next. So here is the team. We are uh, speaking about around 13 people. You see that uh, the team is divided in two blocks. One block is the surge uh, deployees, uh, which are around the functions of coordination, information management, and assessment. And then you've got the support functions, uh, which is basically managing the team. It's also the connection with the other clusters. It's the connection with the countries. It's ensuring the continuity of funding for the project, and it's ensuring the visibility of the project. And this is why we are together this morning. Just uh, to keep in mind that the World Water Week is essentially a development forum, and we are very happy to, uh, to present here humanitarian water and sanitation project because it's a matter of deaths and lives for about 120 million people today. Next. So about the donors. You see the, main, uh, the, the four main donors who are supporting the project. The global amount that we need every year is around 1.5 million USD, which is not gigantic compared to the, the benefit of the project. Uh, just to note that the donors are working hand in hand with the consortium partners, and they're also associated to the strategic decisions through uh, steering committees. So they are invited in all steering committees, and the donors are really partners of the project. Next. If we have a look at the project outcomes, basically uh, the, the project is about supporting the core function of coordinations. And these core function of coordinations are, are not exclusive to the WASH uh, sector, or to the WASH cluster. Uh, they have been decided and validated by the YASC. And uh, it, the way for us to, uh, to support these functions is firstly to have a surge support to countries in crisis. We are intervening either on rapid onset, for example, uh, on Haiti uh, currently, 
either because we have a deterioration of the humanitarian situation or because there's a lack of capacity in the country, essentially. Each deployment is between two to three months. And we also offer a remote support to countries through a help desk. Then we have also an approach which is uh, supporting the global wash cluster. This is an indirect support to the countries because the dedication of the global wash cluster is to support the national platforms. And then also the, the consortium partners benefit also uh, from a support of the project. The, the percentage, if you like, of the, these three uh, fields of uh, activity, it's basically 60% of the project dedicated to surge support and then 40% dedicated to the global wash cluster support and partner support. Next. Looking at the, um, at the main achievements from uh, last November, so the current phase of the project, we had uh, uh, 20 deployments. Um, these deployments, every time we have a deployment, it starts by a request, an official request from the country. Then uh, uh, there is an elaboration of the TORs, the term of reference of the deployments, a concurrence from the donors, then we have the deployment, we have the evaluation, and we have the handover process. Uh, these, those deployments are, um, are essentially uh, about conflicts and complex crises and about natural disasters and more specifically about outbreaks like the deployment we had in March about Ebola in, in Guinea. Next. So this is a map to show you basically where uh, have been the main uh, support in 2021. You can see that it's essentially about African countries and Middle East, but uh, not only, we can speak about Haiti today. Currently, we've got eight people who are either in the field, either in the process of going to the, to the field. And if you look on the, the bottom of the slide, you see that the main functions required are about cluster coordination and information management. Next. This slide is just to show that uh, the support from the field support team is not uh, only about a, a one shot, but it's a continuous support and it's done hand in hand with the support of standby partners. Next. To conclude uh, uh, the, the challenges of the project, one is indeed about ensuring a support to all types of emergencies, including refugee contexts ensuring a continuity of coordination. There is a more technical challenge, which is about meeting the uh, World Humanitarian Summit commitments. We spoke about uh, localization and nexus previously. And of course, we've got a, a very important challenge, which is the funding sustainability. Actually, uh, we, we are still looking for, uh, for, uh, for funds to ensure uh, the full uh, uh, effectiveness of our project. So if there are any donors connected to this session, they are very welcome to contribute. Next. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jeanne, for your presentation. Uh, unfortunately, due to time constraints, we will not be able to do the question and answer session because we ran out of time, unfortunately. But please do feel free to contact us. Uh, put your questions on the chat and we will try to uh, reply individually. The Global Watch Cluster team will reply to each one of you. So I'll now leave the floor to Monica Ramos for the closing remarks. Thank you. Thank you, Martina, and thank you to everyone. So again, it was a real pleasure to have all of, you, all of you join us today at the event on humanitarian coordination at the 2021 World Water Week. We'd really like to thank all of you for your time. We know there are a lot of sessions this week, so making the decision to be with us today is really important to us. We'd also really like to thank all of our esteemed speakers, panelists, as well as those that have been involved with the planning in terms of the moderators. So a big thanks to all of you. We also would like to thank the co-conveners, which are ACF, Solidarity International, and the French Water Partnership, the Global Wash Cluster, and the team at the global level works very closely with these three partners. We appreciate the constant collaboration, and of course, to Siwi for the hosting of this event. So we do really look forward to working with all of you to continue to raise the profile of humanitarian coordination and really advocate for the positive impact that effective coordination can have on predictable, timely, and high-quality 
responses. We also really call on all of you to really take forward um, your engagement in national coordination platforms, particularly working with local actors and uh, authorities to make sure that they are also actively engaging and taking up leadership roles when possible. And really through our experience at the global level, we really want to make sure that as it was touched upon before, that we have a collective commitment and really strategic engagement, making sure that we are properly staffed and sourced and that we have the right people at the right time in the right place to ensure core coordination functions. So we'd like to continue to uh, move forward with driving for results, and we will continue to do that as a Global Wash cluster. And we look to all of you to really join us in this effort. So again, as Martina said, please do feel free to reach out to us. You can visit us at washcluster.net to learn more about the Global Wash Cluster. Of course, each of the activated clusters also have individual pages on the humanitarian response. Uh, website and we really look forward to your future engagement in these type of events and with us in moving forward the face of humanitarian wash coordination thanks to all of you and have a wonderful rest of the day bye hi thank you thank you bye thank you bye thank you bye thank you bye bye